the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Please just hold someone's hand by your left and right while standing. Just, just give me a little volume. Thank you. Thank you. Conferences like this, please listen, are deep moments where the Holy Spirit is allowed to rest upon our lives, to rest upon our businesses. Mary said, how shall these things be, seeing that I know not a man? And then, he said, the power of the highest. How shall it be that in one month, I will shift levels in the spirit? How shall it be that by the end of this year, I will look at my former self and not recognize it again it says the power of the highest shall rest upon you so we're not here just for information alone Eli who said there is a spirit in man 32 and verse 8 of Job it says the breath the breath of the almighty can make men any man, man of God, businessman, politician, any man of understanding. So whilst you're standing here, it is important for you to know that you are not standing just for others. You are standing believing the Lord you are able to shift. You are able to change. I am convinced that meetings are a total waste of time if the people do not change notably notably I made a vow with God that if I have to meet you twice to be blessed I don't deserve to meet you I should never meet a man twice to be blessed so you are here in this place and you are under a very anointing of the spirit it is that grace that quickens it is that grace that makes alive listen it is that grace that takes the veil from off your eyes there is a realm where both the learned and the unlearned will have to depend on the Holy Spirit Isaiah 29 verse 11 please give it to us and the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed not closed sealed it can be opened but it is still sealed the Bible says which men deliver to one that is learned saying read this I pray thee and he said I cannot why it is sealed I opened it but it is still sealed next verse and the book is delivered to him that is not learned saying read this I pray thee and he said I'm not even learned in the first place so there is a realm where both the learned and the unlearned must sit down and trust the wisdom of this ancient one
spirit of the living God again we are here this morning I pray that our eyes be open light of the world you step down to my darkness open my eyes let me see that's the prayer start it again you're the light of the world you've stepped down into darkness pray now open my eyes let me see one more time please sing with me you're the light of the world you step down into darkness open my eyes let me Hallelujah. Here I am to worship. Here I am to Here I am to say. You're all together. All together. All together. seated Micah chapter 4 Salabu sila hasiam baka subratasha skati brada baru siata liba skabadia You are rising said the spirit of the Lord I'm lifting you to new dimensions I'm lifting you I'm lifting you. This is what the Spirit of God is doing. The grace is lifting you. Lifting you new heights. New levels. I'm lifting you. This is what I hear the Spirit of God saying. Listen. Let me teach you something about prophecy. There are two dimensions to prophecy. There is the revelatory dimension of prophecy. The revelatory dimension of prophecy attempts to reveal to the end that your faith be built so you can receive it gives direction it strengthens your conviction but the highest level of prophecy is the creative dimension of prophecy where you make what has no business happening to happen when the prophet said by this time tomorrow he was not revealing what would have happened anyway he made it happen Creation is the highest manifestation of the power of the Holy Spirit. Genesis 1 verse 1 says, In the beginning, God, not from the beginning, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That means he was not in any of them. And then the Bible says, verse 2, Now the earth was dark and void and formless. The Hebrew word, tohu wabohu. Chaos and confusion. Then the Bible says, and the Spirit of God, the master over darkness, hovered round the face of the deep. And then creation or recreation began to happen. There is absolutely nothing God cannot change. Listen, you have to find a way of believing in this conference that whilst you are seated, you are running. That whilst you are seated, you are flying. It is true. It's not just some motivation from a man of God. No, 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 no. It is his divine power that gives us all things. Our faith only connects us to his divine power. The real giver is his divine power. It is able to give us all things that pertains unto life and godliness, the Bible says. But it comes through knowledge. This is why we come to multiply the graces upon our lives through knowledge. Are we blessed? Micah chapter 4. Let's understand the cosmos. Let's deal with this system because this conference was so designed 
to supply spiritual intelligence to bring us to a point where we thoroughly understand the system that we're living in so that we can build an advantage to the end that the saints rise in light and to the end that the Christ be glorified. Never forget that the object behind everything we do is to see Christ revealed and to see Christ glorified. There must be a space in my rising, my lifting, my advancement for the revelation and the glorification of the Christ. Are we together? And the Bible tells us, remember, to be wise as serpents. Now he's teaching us how to live in the cosmos. And he's saying you will need to borrow the philosophy of a serpent. Every time the Bible uses the word serpent in scripture, it always is linked to deception. It's always linked to the devil. But then most of the time, but now he's saying when it has to do with living in the cosmos, you will need to borrow the intelligence of the serpent. Are we blessed? So Micah chapter 4, let's start. Let's see where God will help us. It says, but in the last days, prophet Micah is speaking, it shall come to pass that the house of the Lord, the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains and it shall be exalted above the hills and people although it is upwards will flow to it this is a very very serious description now the bible says listen mountains in scripture generally talk about spheres of influence they talk about systems and structures are we together now now the cosmos was built twofold number one there is the earth the physical territory and then number two there is the sociological system that is made up of men please understand this and i hope you understand that man was and is the zenith of god's creation the apex of his artistry the object of his his creativity is man and the story of man is a long story i cannot begin to start it here we'll spend the whole day discussing the story because most men do not know that they are in the middle of an ancient story it says there was war in heaven are we together now john the revelator by the spirit caught in the isle of patmos he began to document the things that he was seeing and he said once upon a time there was an old story in the heavenlies that there was war one who the bible identifies as satan once upon a time the son of the morning and then the bible says that there was war even in heaven and that he attempted treason satan did not want to dethrone god he wanted to run a parallel government so that you could choose God or him it is still his system today everywhere he sees God he comes as the other option he doesn't necessarily want to replace he wants to be an equal option you have to understand this are we together and so the Bible says because if you do not understand man then you will not understand the cosmos and dominion will be impossible you see this conference is 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 really a very strategic teaching I'm, I'm just trying to create the foundation for us to understand the prophecy of Micah and then deal with a few things and so the Bible tells us that there was rebellion in heaven and Satan was judged he contended with Archangel Michael and he could not prevail and a space was no longer found for him are we together now and then he was cast to the earth and there was a lamentation first there was joy in heaven but there was a lamentation woe to the inhabitants of the earth that satan that old serpent so he's not young anything old must be respected old money old ideas old enemies anything old has the advantage of experience listen carefully we're dealing with the cosmos here 
it's not to put fear it's just it's just an information that he's called an old serpent he's been cast to the earth so he's lamenting and saying hey earth, beware this guy is a master of treason and he's come within your domain the next time we hear about that old serpent he found his way through the system of earth to sit upon this mountain he was cast from earth as a failure but he utilized his experience to collect the keys of dominion from adam and now began to build a system reflecting him remember earth was warned they said beware of this guy he's dangerous and the earth neglected that warning and by the time jesus comes satan says i have the keys look at the glory of the world whoever can fish himself through a system and become king there is a strategy there we must learn are you getting all that i've been saying so the bible says when you are wise be wise as serpents there is a secret of dominion a serpent has no hands and no legs yet you run away from it a serpent may not even run faster than you only one point of attack yet it is not threatened by any when a lion eats you see the evidence a serpent swallows and the digestion happens inside there are powerful you don't see serpents moving in twos I'm just giving you an idea. Please sit down. So this cosmos we are living in, listen carefully. The Bible says forever, O Lord, thy word is settled. It didn't say on earth. He told you the domain where the word of God has entered its Sabbath, heaven. But on earth there is still a contention. And one day, Revelations 11 and verse 15 will become a reality. That the seventh angel blew his trumpet and there were voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our God and of we his Christ. And then the prophecy of Daniel becomes a reality that he will reign forever and ever. It's amazing that the book ends with the beginning of a new dispensation. Are we blessed but for now we are mandated having accepted christ the advantage of his life in our lives the bible tells us that we must now understand the cosmos that not everybody is born again that not everybody subscribes to your ideologies and that you must sustain the intelligence to be able to live in the cosmos still succeed and glorify the name of the christ are we blessed so this will take a system of mentorship supplying us the various dimensions of information Micah in the last days he's giving you an information that it shall come to pass that the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains and it shall be exalted above the hills and that action will be so attractive the Bible says people shall flow to it verse 2 it says they shall say unto one another come let us go up to the it started as the house of god the mountain of god now it says the house of the god of jacob and he will teach us this will be the advantage of that mountain they are privy to information that make for dominion come and show us the secrets he will teach us his ways and we will walk in his path for the Lord shall go forth from Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 prophet Isaiah is buttressing on these revelations verse 1 he starts by saying arise Isaiah 60 and verse 1 he says shine and he tells you why he says for thy light is come not your light is around just like faith light comet it can come to you 
the light has always been there but until it comes to you you cannot arise you don't arise because you are tired of sitting you arise because your light is come and then the bible says the glory of the lord is risen upon you amplified puts it in a very interesting way he says arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you he says rise to a new light rise the glory of the lord is risen upon you the next verse says for darkness now this is a pro this is this is very prophetic the bible is giving us an insider information so that we are not surprised it says a time will come in the age of of the church and in the dealings here in the cosmos that darkness will cover the earth and gross darkness the people it says but the lord shall arise upon you and his glory shall be seen upon you oh i receive verse three hallelujah it says gentiles now here it is a time will come we'll stop looking for them there is a system that will be at work in us that will compel gentiles to come to thy light and even their arrogant kings to the brightness of thy rising hallelujah praise the lord this is very very powerful darkness shall cover the earth gross darkness the people but upon you there is an advantage the advantage is light and that that light will one day compel the nations to come and see and acknowledge and when sheba came to solomon she did not come empty she came with gifts even though he was blessed because whoever possesses that light cannot be ignored within the context of a generation it is impossible neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel if the lamp is not lit no problem you can throw it anywhere but provided there is light it is impossible to hide light Put a cloth upon light you will still know there is light hide it in darkness you will still know there is light light cannot be hidden when jesus came teaching in his beatitudes he still began to teach and he said you are the light of the cosmos that means the definition of darkness is the world without you you are the light of the world you are akin to a city that is set on a hill it says neither do men light a lamp and put it under the bushel then it says you are the salt of the earth you are not the salt of the world you are the salt of the earth the powerful thing about salt is you can put it in food anytime there are ingredients that if you, if you put it late you've messed up the whole meal but even when the food is done and is tasteless you can still do something about it Are we blessed we are called light we are called salt now let's let's deal with let's deal with these things when I, I gave us the illustration yesterday when Jesus took Satan up the mountain and showed him the glories of this world that means the glories of this world are hidden in the mountains are we together now let me begin to deal with Micah's prophecy there is a location where you find the glories of the world the word glory is the Hebrew word um, kabod. Am I right? The Greek is doxa. And the original expression is the weightiness of a thing. It's an attempt to measure the worth of a thing. So that when you want to know the worth of earth, when you want to know the riches, the vastness of the earth, it tells you the location that the glories are residing within the mountains. Are we together now the glory the riches the influence now let me say one more thing before i begin to teach the gospel please look up the bible ties what we know to be the coming the end of the age you know rumors of wars and so on and so forth and um i may not argue with the fact that you know people teach that there are signs of the end times and the bible does recognize these things as signs but there is only one ultimate sign of the end time that the bible teaches us it says and this gospel 
of the kingdom shall be preached as a witness to all the earth and then the end will come all of the things we call signs are beginnings of birth pains the bible says there is only one sign that the moment you see that the teaching of the kingdom the influence of the government of heaven begins to permeate systems and structures get ready because the dominion of the saints is about to be revealed and christ is coming as the king of we kings he's not coming for a weak church he's coming for a bride that is adorned are we are we together now these are very vital informations that must be it must be at the back of your mind as we explore dealing with the cosmos if not you will be distracted these are the things that peg your success and keep you at the level of balance because success without these understandings will distract you you will veer off there are too many options when you are blessed so this this information creates the coordinates so that the things that destroy others do not destroy you the bible says even fools can prosper the only advantage is that their prosperity will or their disadvantage is that their prosperity will destroy them and a fool is one who says in his heart there is no god that means he acts as though there is no god are we blessed we have to understand the system so the glories are hidden within the mountains whoever wants to access the glory of the earth must sustain the intelligence to ascend those mountains and find a space there now listen very carefully these mountains please can I have seven people just seven gentlemen just come stand here the mountains are called mind control systems please write them down please just stand at my, it's not an impartation oh dear just, just please just stand you know every time I call for people like this they run they think I'm going to lay hands <laughs> seven of you are there seven okay thank you thank you now watch this watch this South Africa please watch this the Bible lets us know that the glories of the earth are hidden in the mountains are you following my, my discourse now that means if I can find and I told you mountains represent systems and structures of influence in fact um, let me digress a bit and talk about the gospel the word gospel means good news tidings that bring joy are we together now the Bible teaches us that there are two dimensions to the gospel please say two dimensions one more time say two dimensions there is the gospel as a message that saves that's the first dimension and sadly the only dimension that most of the church knows there is the gospel as a message what is the content of that message a revelation of the father's love demonstrated in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of the son targeted towards that object of his love called man and then by extension creation to the end that believing that report we will have the life of God what John calls the way do you agree that is the message of the gospel but there is the ideology of the gospel now this is the dimension that the church is ignorant of there is the gospel as a message and there is the gospel as a mind control system there is the gospel as an ideology the ideology of the gospel is the ideology that seeks to see and make christ enthroned all across the cosmos it is the ideology if all you have is the message of the gospel you are saved but you are not safe because your territory the 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 message affects you alone it is the ideology that affects your cosmos please follow me we're dealing with something very serious here i have believed that message it profits me alone but there is something the ideology can do to my mind that is what will bring the cosmos under the influence of the christ one more concept i defined and then we'll begin to teach on this am i wasting your time 
let's talk about kingdom advancement i love you too thank you kingdom advance listen there is such a concept called kingdom advancement and i must teach you what it is what is kingdom advancement if you want to write please write this down kingdom advance is the deploying of every and any scriptural strategy the deploying of any and every scriptural strategy that enthrones christ first in the hearts of men and then across every strata of human activities this is kingdom advance i repeat the deploying of any and every scriptural strategy that leads to the enthroning of the christ first across the hearts of men and then across every strata of human activity south africa please look at me it is not difficult to see christ glorified if you understand this so when you say you are advancing the kingdom this is what you are saying i am an active contributor to seeing that the lordship of the christ be enthroned first in the hearts of men that's called evangelism second across the strata of human activities that's called influence so the key to kingdom advance is both evangelism and influence please see after me evangelism and then say influence for many years the church in africa and we are well-meaning people sincerely we have embraced evangelism and so we we are concerned with the the establishment of the lordship of the christ across the hearts of men and so we have sincere people morally sound they love god but the system is still under the control of a government that continues to frustrate and sabotage the progress of the church and so it, the remedy is a correct understanding of the gospel of the kingdom that it will take both evangelism and influence in that order not influence before evangelism no christ must be enthroned in our hearts then enthroned in our territory are we blessed are you following me now so kingdom advance and let me tell you this because i'm about to explain to us what we call purpose and explain to us what we call assignment or destiny we've complicated it with several teachings there is absolutely nothing complicated about purpose or assignment your purpose and assignment is simply the role you have to play in that universal agenda called kingdom advance we have been distributed roles to play and when you find your role the geography of your dominion the geography of your witness is called your assignment are we blessed so if all i have is jesus in my heart i am happy but my children are in trouble your territory is in trouble someone will sign a policy one day that will completely sabotage everything you have built for kingdom come it was because joseph had access to the king that god's covenant people were saved jacob was a prophet but they would have still died it took a man of influence you've heard me say it for those of you who listen to my teachings the body of jesus is hanging on a tree and no prayer warrior could bring it down it took a man of influence called joseph of arimathea who had access to government to negotiate the body of the christ to come down he owned an estate that we called a tomb and that was where the body was dropped for your salvation look at the forces that played their roles don't just look at the cross alone the grave too played a role the tomb played a role otherwise we will not be able to say oh death where is your sting oh grave where is your victory so ministry therefore is not just preaching it's not just teaching you begin to minister the day you find your place 
in this agenda. The fivefold or fourfold, as we argue, really speaking, are not ministers. They are the gifts that prepare the ministers. The Bible says he gave gifts unto men. Ephesians 4. The gifts are not talents. The gifts are men to men. He gave men called gifts to men. And the assignment of those gifts, the Bible says he gave unto some apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers. It says for the perfecting, the maturing of the saints. That the saints now being matured by those gifts will do the work of the ministry. What is the work of the ministry? Seeing to it that the kingdoms of this world become the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ. I will tell you why many people pray, God bless me, God lift me, and they never seem to see certain levels of territorial blessings. It's not because you cannot buy and sell. It's because God has not found a space in your understanding that accommodates his agenda. Please listen to me. The Bible says, withhold not good from him that it is due when it is within your power. So when it looks like God is withdrawing, it's an act of his mercy. Because that barrenness in understanding will affect you when you are blessed with certain resources and influence. The only thing that gives it value is this knowledge. So you sit in a position where with one signature you can help a thousand believers. But because you do not have this understanding, you don't know what to do with this vast influence. And Satan will come to suggest and tell you there is a way. Influence is useless when understanding is unfruitful. Let's define influence. We know what evangelism is. Let me give you my definition of influence. Influence, as I define it, is the ability to make men buy into your convictions without using force or cruelty. The compelling power that makes men to buy into your convictions. You force them to believe what you believe without using cruelty influence now if you this is a dangerous message for the kingdom of darkness believe me this is it that's the secret influence if i can make a territory buy into my ideology which is a reflection of the ideology of the kingdom then in one day a nation can be saved now watch this Influence is very powerful because at every point it, they define civilization, they define right and wrong, they define their mind control systems. Let's go back to Micah's prophecy. You see how difficult it is to walk this thing. Micah says, It shall come to pass in the last days that the influence of the church will begin to rise. Now you understand what he's saying? The influence. Something will happen to that weak church that looks like the rejected stone. And he says the influence, like a seed that has been thrown to the earth, suddenly it will look like the church is playing, but you will see it in ever increasing measures. And that a day will come, listen now, that people will begin to note and say, look, these guys are a force we cannot ignore. And as a result, Gentiles will come. That's influence. It's one thing to call them, come see a man. But it's another thing for them to come. He says, shall you also go? He said, to whom shall we go? Joseph said, oh king, find a man who is discreet and wise. And the king said, who shall we find? Listen. If you understand what I share with you today, you will step into dimensions. You see, the value of the anointing is that it comes upon the container of your understanding. The true potential of the anointing is seen when your understanding is fruitful. Are we, are we blessed now? Now, let's deal with this thing. We know, sociologically speaking, 
that this cosmos this earth popular concept that we all understand in the body of christ there are what we know to be seven mountains are we together but then let me share with you something powerful about them seven mountains that control the entire activities of the human race to date the entire earth in terms of influence can be broken into seven mountains should i say what i want to say yes. will you believe it yes. okay now man is not tripartite just just listen just absorb it and, and just listen carefully there is no such concept as spirit stand here soul stand here body stand here Th that is nonsense watch this listen i understand what people who purport this are trying to say man is spirit but because of the law of territory that any spirit that must function in the earth realm must sustain a material body made of the materials of that territory it's called the law of territory that's why we cannot live in the water indefinitely why because there is something about that that ecosystem are we together that we were not built for you fly but you don't live in the air if you fly excessively you have something called a jet lag it's a reminder that you were not designed to live on the air are we together now now <laughs> please listen to me man is spirit but a body had to be built for that spirit a body has thou prepared are we together the body hosts the spirit but there was a problem so here is spirit here is body there's no system of relating because they come from two different realms are we together so a medium was created that allows the duality of realms so that that entity can still relate with the realm he came from and still be effective in this realm hold on the name of that connector is called the mind the mind is a medium that's where we get the word media ah. so the assignment of the media is to connect intentions with experience pray in the spirit for one minute we, we have to ask god to help us this morning <laughs> We want to walk something seriously in this place. The gospel of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Please sit down. Now, so you understand my teaching. The mind is the faculty that gives the intention of the spirit expression in the earth realm the body is merely an executor it does not have a will of its own that's why when you separate the spirit from the body we name that experience death not the cessation of life but now you have separated them and that body lies down there now this is very powerful so when you say this man is a pastor now if this man god forbid falls to the ground and dies you don't call the dead body a pastor so who was really the pastor are we together our society is shaped by these fears of influence seven of them let me name them quickly we have to save time please write this is very important number one there are concepts that are popular so i will use them and just 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 walk around them the first fear of influence call them mountains now 
it's called the mountain of religion write it down please this is the sphere that decides the spiritual conviction of a people within a territory that means that any territory you can know the quality of what is happening in this mountain by the spiritual convictions of the people within a territory if there is a prevalent error within a territory this is the mountain to blame someone is not doing his job well and is, is by so doing altering the convictions of the people wrongly are we together so when god calls you as a man of god this is the geography of your witness religion are we blessed let me tell you this watch this everybody believes in something don't mind the ignorance of people when they say i don't believe in anything not not believing in anything means you believe in yourself nebuchadnezzar put an idol of himself so he believed in himself when you believe in yourself as as against believing in god is still idolatry you should believe in yourself when you are motivating people but you can build an image of yourself and worship it you are still an idol worshiper it's just that you are worshiping yourself are we blessed the mountain of religion watch this if god is going to invade a land and birth dimensions of his grace and glory this is where he will come from when he was about to come to the earth he went to the priest Zechariah he didn't go to the scribes he didn't go to the learned people he went here and said Zechariah something is about to happen John is coming he will have to forerun the coming of Jesus John wanted to mess him up Zechariah and he shut his mouth Zechariah became deaf and dumb not because God hated him he wanted to use priesthood to abort destiny and God said no we have to do something this man has an anointing upon him and if he speaks he will affect the climate he has dominion over the cosmos remember Zechariah was the priest that was in charge of priesthood for that year so heaven recognized that office there was a throne that backed that office and god said let's help men by shutting this man's mouth so sometimes shutting your mouth is not wickedness is to be sure that what you are saying is right god may temporarily withdraw your influence and vet what you are about to communicate the content of your message when he finds it right, the tulip gates are open for you. Then the nations can now hear you. Are we blessed? Religion. Number two. The mountain of family. This is a very serious mountain. Every arm robber comes from a home. Hello? Every thief was born every troublemaker that harasses society was born every terrorist was born every apostle and great general was born family is very important this is the first revelation of the love of jesus family the bible begins with family and ends with family the most honorable name that god gives himself is father not even just lord abba he says when you pray to me i have many names but this is my most preferred name abba father abba does not mean one who has a child no you don't have to have a child to be father father means source sustainer defender when you call me abba you acknowledge that every other thing aside from me is only a channel I am the source somebody say my father the mountain of family we have to save marriages we have to save children most of the nonsense that happens in society starts here when a child does not experience love from the home he ships his anger to anywhere he finds himself and his entire lifetime will be spent on a revenge mission and if you happen to be the victim of his revenge 
then he can make your life miserable that person can become a politician tomorrow and hate people unnecessarily because subconsciously the anger from that background please don't say it does not matter some of the happiest people on earth today are either people who are sociologically speaking people who come from good families i hope you know that a man and a woman are two dimensions of god he separated them so that god will use marriage to help men understand him the the primary listen the primary assignment of marriage is not just for having children a woman is a dimension of god a man is a dimension of god that separation was made so that man will understand the highest revelation of god in intimacy that is the reason why the holy ghost is also called what the woman is called helper you, you see that yes that means that you understand him when you understand women hallelujah listen please sit please sit ladies you will make lunch for me this afternoon i mean watch this now please sit down let me tell you this now, now truly speaking i know we're laughing but but just just pay attention listen the mountain of family is very powerful the first sermon a child should have about God should come from the relationship between father, mother, daddy, mommy, not pastor. The first education of the child should not come from school. should come right here. And the way the Bible says is to train up a child. Hold on. How does a train move? Hold me. Do as I do. Don't just listen to me. This is how children are trained. Don't, don't, don't ask me to go and buy you a cigarette and when I bring it, you now tell me if I catch you smoking, I will kill you. No, no, no. Children are not good listeners, but they are good imitators. Let me teach you how to train your child. You are saying, son, I want to show you about kingdom finances. This is my own money this is your own right this you're teaching your child now and you're saying now watch me father thank you one day that child will kneel down with you you don't have to invite the child just do it sincerely and consistently and that child will come to you one day you will drive him he will not go because you have become an influence one day when he's alone and you travel the spirit of god will come you can the child can pray you can be praying around the house every night and laying hands on your children your wife and then one day your son will follow you too you'll say boy go and sleep and he will cry he's becoming a man of the spirit by following a man of the spirit listen when this place is correct it will reduce the work of pastors it will reduce the nuisance that all kinds of trouble and nonsense that men of God go through. What about teachers? The home, a place that should help, a place that should build. This is where you can look and say, look, son, you are handsome. Daughter, you are beautiful and I love you. And she comes back and says, daddy, Someone told me I'm not beautiful. Say, don't mind that, that blind gentleman. I've, I'm, I'm your father and I know, let me show you from scripture. So that even when I'm not around, that conviction remains true. Because if I just tell you the day I'm not there, you will look for me everywhere. But I need to, I will start, but I will direct you to the word that can outlive me. Listen, I don't want to dwell here. Valentine is over already. But watch this every man is threefold when you are speaking about family every man is a husband defines his relationship exclusively to his wife every man is father defines the jurisdiction of his responsibility every man is priest 
when you find a man that is not these three things run away there's no need saying god is he your will run, i'm answering you now run fast you don't have to be father when you have children the apex of fatherhood is responsibility then every woman is a wife a wife is not one who is married bible says he that finds a wife meaning she has to be a wife before she's found <laughs> hallelujah now please listen listen a wife is a posture is a state there is an understanding you sustain that makes you a wife it has nothing to do with a man coming around you now listen please and then every woman is a mother the hallmark of motherhood is sacrifice any woman that has not yet sustained the fortitude for sacrifice is not a mother even if you have children and then like the man every woman is also priest or every woman is a priest when a proverbs 31 woman meets with a job 29 man they will make a psalm 112 home let's stop here family everybody say family number three the third mountain is education this is a very serious mountain because your concepts and ideas about life are foundationally built from here it matters the quality of our institutions you need to know what your child is hearing when you are not there don't say it does not matter children return back and ask parents questions they cannot sleep daddy what is this and he says how old are you daddy i'm seven who taught you no they didn't teach me i saw my teacher saying it or doing it we must trust god for the grace and the resources to build schools that are run by the value system of the kingdom before the school resumes the teachers do a vigil shalika paruskiata they lay hands on the report cards of the children this is what we are talking about that while the teacher is teaching suddenly there is a student with all kinds of oppressions coming from a family and the teacher does not say you are lazy and dull because the teacher is also a priest and the teacher says young lady see me in my office i have noticed you don't do well and she says it's not my fault and says let me show you how it works in the kingdom there is a spirit in man now please don't think i'm just entertaining you whether you are interested or not god is up already doing it <laughs> our schools where we teach our children values of honor diligence respect have you noticed how our teenagers resent god if we uh, i want to say it respectfully i love the body of christ i'm sent to the body but this where you family this right here was the mistake of the west when mighty things were happening in the 60s and the 70s some of our mothers and our fathers who continue to do great things around they ignored the children notice in the exodus of israel the, a negotiation came let the men go but leave and later it's okay let your children your children is your future you see why the miracle of that woman whose husband was a prophet and died the debtors what did they want to do with the children dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video 
Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashkana Kata Branda Katekatos. Kata Branda Kata Pakotos Koto Breka Teka Nekata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline. 